Hello, welcome back. Today I thought we could do a run through of all of my handbags. Essentially a good old fashioned handbag collection video. I want to give you mini reviews on all of the styles that I have and I do just want to warn you and preface this by saying I have more bags than the average person. I have more bags than anybody needs to have and I'll be doing a little bit of a review of what I do and don't need to keep after this video because I'm looking at the pile before me now and it just, it's overwhelming. It feels like too much. And I've had them split in two separate spaces in our house, which is what I think has really allowed the number to balloon. But I have also been collecting these over the past decade and a number of these were sent to me as part of my work because I do review quite a lot of bags. And I will be sure to put an asterisk down in the description box so you know which ones were sent to me and which ones I purchased with my own money. All the links will be down below if you want to go check anything out. I'm going to just get started and I will go brand by brand so I'll have timestamps on screen in case you just want to skip ahead to a specific part of the video. So the very first bag that I wanted to talk about is my Acne Mini Misubi bag. Now this is called a mini but it's really a medium size bag in my opinion. It is much larger than a small size bag because it fits all the essentials and then some. I get asked a lot about the strap. This is actually removable. There are some press studs here underneath the origami detail, which allow you to remove the strap if you just want to have it as a handheld bag. But I really think this shines most as a crossbody. It makes it hyper-functional. The wide strap is so comfortable, so it means to regardless of how heavy the bag is, it distributes the weight really evenly. And that is something that is really handy about this bag. The quality of the leather is really, really nice, though I have had issues with the glazing on mine and I'm pretty sure I've done a review on my website so I'm going to link that down below but the glazing cracked after about six months and I think maybe this might be a fault as opposed to it being a production-wide issue as I know other people who I've spoken to have said they haven't had any issues with theirs. Overall, definitely one of my favorite bags that I've ever purchased. And I do quickly want to compare this to the Arquette version, which I think is a good alternative if you don't quite have the budget for the Acne one, because this is expensive. This one won't set you back quite as much. And the leather quality, it is really good. It's a lot stiffer though, I would say, than the Acne. It kind of holds its integrity and structure, whereas the Acne one will soften a lot more. My other comment to make about this bag is that the strap is a lot thinner. So this is a heavy bag and it's actually slightly heavier than the Acne one because I think they've used a thicker leather. Uh, but it means that when you don't really have much in it, it is still quite weighty. It's still, it really bears down on your shoulder and I find this a lot less comfortable to wear than this one here. But other details that are different are the little buckle detail here on the side. Inside is very, very similar. It also has uh, two pockets, one either side with a center separator which has a zip up pocket um, and the acne one's the same basically on the inside so those are the first two bags next i want to talk about my little longchamp mini bag i actually don't know the formal name for this so i will make sure to put it on screen or at least in the description box i bought this in duty free a while ago it was inspired by my friend helen who has it in a different color and i just thought it would make a good little everyday crossbody bag but when I was buying it, I was in a real rush and I neglected to realize that it doesn't actually come with a crossbody strap. I purchased mine from AliExpress of all places um, and I have seen other people selling them for upwards of $80 and I think they're just buying them from a seller in AliExpress and then selling them at a higher price point. So I will be sure to link where I got mine from because it actually really mimics the uh, color of the strap so well that it looks like it is designed to be worn with the bag and it comes with both gold hardware and silver. I want silver because it matches the uh, hardware on the bag but this is a great size to hold your iPhone. I've got the iPhone Pro Max and then a little card holder, your lipstick and then also keys. Doesn't really hold much more than that but great to have just even in your bag that you can pull out and if you're heading out for lunch from the office then you just really need to carry this. Next bag I often get asked about is the Le Mer Croissant bag and I bought this about two years ago now. This has the most whimsical and playful detail of having the croissant kind of stitching along the front and it has this really nice puffy style zip pull which I really like. This bag looks so flat if it's not stuffed. I have actually stuffed it now. It's got a cotton twill lining. My bugbear with this bag, this is a small size for anyone wondering, is that there is no interior zip compartment or actually even a slip 
pocket and I personally wish that they would do that so that you could keep some of your things secure because when the bag is fully open it's quite a wide opening and sometimes I worry that my belongings are going to fall out. The quality of it though is impeccable. It is just such a pleasure to wear it. The leather is so soft. I haven't got a single scratch on it. The zipper moves really smoothly. Uh, I think this is absolutely stunning for the budget for it though I have seen more affordable options around. I mean I think even the Cos one is a really great alternative. Otherwise you can always go for one of those ones from Uniqlo if you just want that kind of crescent shaped bag. Next brand, the next brand I want to talk about is Monero, which is a Korean brand that is fast becoming one of my favorites for leather goods. And I thought we could talk about the Blanc bag first, one that I've been sharing quite a bit recently because it struck me as a really beautiful, affordable alternative to the Rose Margot tote, which everyone seems to be going crazy for, but I really don't know anyone who's got over $10,000 to spend on a bag like that. The quality of the leather is really beautiful. It has a nice shine to it. As you can see, this has a little buckle detail here, which is affixed with a press stud and then the interior of the bag is quite roomy uh, and capacious it has two front pockets and then a zip pocket at the back cotton twill lining I mean I don't think you can go wrong you'll be able to see from the cutaways that the style of this and the drop of the handle means you can't really wear it over your shoulder it would be very very uncomfortable to do so so this is a top handle bag only or you can hold it in the crook of your arm but I think really beautiful if you want to have that kind of modern formal ladylike sort of a tote. The other bag I have from Monero is called their Sara tote and this has a really long drop as you can see for the handles which is great so you can wear it on the shoulder. It's not quite long enough that you can wear it crossbody so it is purely a shoulder bag. I really like the size of it. it. Kind of reminds me a little bit of a bowler bag in some ways. It has a magnetic closure which isn't the firmest magnetic closure ever but it still uh, keeps the bag shut and then um, I actually have just recently stuffed it so it would hold its shape but again it's got the cotton twill lining, the zip up pocket, I mean I really like the compartments the way it's organized on the inside and that's part of the reason why I'm really drawn to this bag. I do have a discount code for W Concept so if you are looking at any bags on there you can use my code Mademoiselle 10 and that'll stack 10% on top of whatever the current price is. Let's do Cezanne next and I thought we could start off with the Claude bag, I believe this one is called. Uh, this here is a really great saddle style bag. It is in the Peyton Mock Croc, so very, very durable and hard wearing, which is something that I rely on it for. The only sign of wear on this bag has actually been to the clasp where it does have some scratches and because it is so shiny, you do notice that when it kind of hits the light in a very specific way. Uh, this has kind of gone on to be one of my most frequently reached for bags just because of how easy going it is, particularly having young children. I don't have to worry about this getting any marks on it or anything like that. Uh, and it is really well constructed. It's quite a thick leather, but it doesn't feel too heavy. Uh, and I don't ever really find that the strap feels too weighty on my shoulder. It is adjustable. This is a good one if you're petite because there are three strap length options the middle one being really good if you do have a shorter torso because it means it will sit at the perfect point so that is the Claude and then similarly I do also have the Milo so here you can kind of see a side by side of the two bags and kind of how they compare they're sort of the same depth the Milo is definitely a larger bag. Now I've got this in the natural heritage leather and it is worth noting that despite this being the most beautiful color, it is incredibly delicate. So you may be able to see, maybe not. Mine has little scratches all over it and it's because my kids have kind of grabbed the bag and uh, I've been a little bit clumsy, I will say. I think I dropped this a couple of times, so there's marks just all over it. And that kind of adds to the charm, I think, especially if you like when your things look well loved, lived in. It kind of is the type of bag that will reflect that and will reflect the life that you lead. Uh, again, this has that same class detail, which I think is really lovely. The interior is one large pocket here with a smaller pocket at the back. It's got the zip closure, two open slip pockets. I mean, I think functionally this is so well designed and it also has a little slip pocket at the back too. Very, very handy, a really good size for every day. So you can fit a decent amount in here, not a water bottle or a umbrella or anything like that, but you can fit all of your essentials that you would need to carry around with you. Maybe a little snack or two as well. I would say if I was to get this again, I would pick a different color and a more durable material. Maybe they've got this kind of uh, python effect leather, which I think would probably have been a better choice, uh, but 
I mean, the natural heritage leather is absolutely stunning. And I think this is one of those styles that you can't go wrong with. I mean, either of these, this one feels a little bit more equestrian, whereas this one feels a little bit more classic in my opinion. This little straw bag is also from Cezanne. I think I bought this close to two years ago now. It is in the woven raffia and I really love the fact that it's got the woven raffia combined with the natural heritage leather straps. I think really, really sweet. It's a good size and it has a magnetic closure, which is actually quite a firm magnetic closure as well great if you are kind of worried about security because it really does keep the top of the bag cinched in nicely assuming you haven't overstuffed it there aren't any interior pockets it's just one large open pouch but again a good size just for the essentials especially if you use a card holder as opposed to a full-size wallet okay next we have quince and i have this little dumpling pouch style bag this was a recent purchase i bought this in december i think it was basically what i wanted was an evening bag in a light color i've got an evening bag in black and i wanted something that i could wear with light colored outfits so that i could have less contrast something that was more muted and this is perfect it's a really nice quality leather uh, I think the construction of it is so nice and it also has a little removable detachable strap you can adjust the strap by just adding a little knot and then it has the magnet closure I've left my stuff but that is what it looks like on the inside and how it kind of folds and how it kind of slouches in on itself when it doesn't have anything in it so that is a really good shout and I feel like the price point of it was really good too. We have two old Celine bags. These are from the Phoebe Philo era. Uh, so we'll talk about the one I bought first, my Celine Trotter bag. And it's really funny because I haven't used this in years, mostly because my phone was too big. I, at least I remember at one point my phone was too big to fit in this bag. And I think Apple maybe might have rejigged the sizing on their phones because my Pro Max does fit in here. So I'm going to put this back on rotation because I absolutely adore this. I always get so many comments on it. It is very similar in style to the Claude from Cezanne. Here you can kind of see a side by side, but I think this one feels a little bit more elegant and refined. And I think that's down to the fact that the gold plate is hidden by this little pocket here that it rests in. Uh, but this has been such a gorgeous bag. Don't make the mistake that I did if you ever find this on the pre-love market, because it's the only way to get it these days, where you leave the uh, plate sitting out like that because the leather on mine has gotten scratched. But uh, it's just a really good functional everyday bag for the essentials. I still love it as much today as I did when I first bought it. I think seven years ago. <laughs> the other bag that I've got from the Phoebe Philo era of Celine is the Trio bag. And I think this is hands down one of the best, most functional bags that Celine ever designed because you can actually remove the pouches. So you can use just one of the pouches as an evening clutch, which is absolutely genius. I tend not to unsnap mine too much. I'm just really worried about the uh, closure losing its firmness, if that makes any sense. But this one I actually bought pre-loved and I had previously owned it in lavender, which was a really blue, but I just never really reached for it. And this to me felt like a much more wearable option. I think it's in the goat skin leather. It does have some scratches on it, but because I bought it pre-loved and I got it for a really good price because it did have quite significant signs of wear and tear from that perspective, I am not precious with this at all. I don't baby it. And it's my go-to bag when I'm traveling because of all the different compartments. It makes it very easy to organize your belongings. I will say there are definitely quality control issues with this bag. I have read so many things about people losing the straps. The one that I bought previously, one of the little press studs, on here actually fell off and I'd worn it less than 10 times. Very, very disappointing. And when I took it to the Celine counter, they refused to help me. They basically said, you're on your own. So that really frustrated me. And we didn't have a Celine store at the time that I could go to to see whether they might be able to assist. But all up, really thrilled with this. And I think if you have been eyeing this up, you like this functionality, still a great bag to buy. Though I do have one which I think is even better than this. I'm going to talk about the next actually. So we'll run through all of my bags from Sabin. And I do just want to disclose that I do work with Sabin on a monthly basis. So you may see over on my Instagram that I'm always sharing new styles with you. Those are press samples. So they always go back. Though I do have a handful of bags in my collection that the brand has given me. And I have a discount code, which is Jamie Loves Sabin. 
2015. But it's really wonderful whenever I hear from people who have bought one. I have so many friends and family who have their bags and it's always nice kind of talk about them and how beautiful the quality is. It, it far exceeds the price point. Uh, so this is the Tilly's Big Sis bag and this is probably my favorite bag that Sabin do. It is very similar to the trio that I just showed you. Here's a side by side so you can actually see they're very similar sizes. The Tilly's Big Sis is ever so slightly larger but the main difference being here is that it has a singular zip at the top. When you open it up it is actually split into multiple compartments so you can easily organize your things. There are card holders in there so you don't even need to carry a wallet with you. Really kind of helps you to reduce everything you have. This is again also a really great bag for travel and it's one that I will often wear in the autumn winter months because the berry hue is just so rich and I think it works well with those kind of deep colors we naturally gravitate towards when it's cool. You can also add on these really neat little uh, chains as well which I think adds this nice little embellishment touch of adornment that feels like jewelry um, but yeah this I've had for two years now and it looks immaculate okay my second favorite bag from Sabin has to be the mini cocoa bag and if you have been subscribed for a while then you may have seen my uh, vlog where I went to Dallas for the LTK conference a couple of years ago and this was the bag that I took with me. It is in the woven white leather. They don't have this exact color anymore and I have asked so many times but as far as I'm aware they're not bringing it back but I do think the taupe is absolutely divine and that one is currently on sale. Uh, this is really sweet because it has the detachable top handle also a detachable crossbody strap which is great and then you can add on those chains too if you want to add a little bit more embellishment. It has a zip top closure, so fully secure, and then also a zip up pocket on the inside as well. I mean, hyper functional, really practical, and that texture, it just adds so much interest to an outfit. And then we have my Cassia bag in the black. Now, this is a really cute half moon shaped bag. It almost feels a little bit 70s inspired to me. And then it has the tubular shaped shoulder strap. It has this very interesting kind of snake belcher style zip detail which I like how it just drapes over the bag like that. This also has a crossbody strap but personally I prefer it as a shoulder bag so I don't really use it with the crossbody strap very frequently. Um, again the quality is exactly the quality of the leather they use it is consistent throughout all of the bags and this is coming from someone who has kind of had the chance to experience so many of the handbags over the last couple of years but interior it is in that kind of chocolate brown lining and then it's got a zip up pocket too there's also a little uh, hook on there so that you can attach your keys so that's the cassia then we have the tilly bag and i just want to show you the tilly's big sis next to the tilly bag for size comparison now I got the Tilly bag last year. I really like this taupe color. I think it is absolutely stunning. Such a good neutral. However, I will say that I prefer the Tilly's Big Sis just because it fits all my things in it. When I'm using this one, I really have to actually downsize. I have to remove all of my cards out of my wallet because otherwise I can't get everything I need in here. This, I think, is a much better option for more of an evening bag or if you are someone who wants to utilize it more as a wallet that you can then keep into a larger bag. It does have that same sort of functionality on the interior with the two pockets. There's a zip-up pouch in the center and then you've got the card holders there and then it does also come with a little wristlet as well so you can wear it like an evening bag which is really cute. The final bag that I've got from the same is the Odile bag. This is one of their evergreen styles just like the Tilly's Big Sis, the Tilly etc. Um, and this I have in the black leather which is again a color they have all the time. This one has a really interesting geometric shape. It also has this tubular trim along the base of the bag and then you have this stitching detail on the sides. Adjustable crossbody strap and then the top of the bag has these two zippers which kind of open at opposite ends. Really good functionality for uh, organizing your items and then it has on one side it's got sort of a slip pocket on the other side it's got the zip up pocket uh, again a really good bag and you can see mine's held up really well I have done a full review of this on my website so again I will be sure to link that one below but from a wear and tear perspective it has held up really well you can see when it is not stuff with anything when it's empty that the leather kind of does sort of soften on itself which kind of shows you how it has aged really nicely but if you do want it to retain its structure and shape I would recommend keeping it stuffed with tissue so that it does. Next we have the Parisa Wang Enchanted Mini Bag I think. I think it's the correct size. I will make sure I put the right size on screen. Maybe this is a small. Uh, this is kind of in a beautiful taupe color. The leather on this is textured but it feels really kind of durable. I will admit I haven't reached for this one 
that often and I think it might be because it does feel a little bit too ladylike for me. It is kind of giving me Hermes Kelly vibes but without the price tag. Also reminds me a little bit of my uh, Fenty Peekaboo. Um, it is plain at the back, has a nice adjustable and removable crossbody strap and then this closes with a uh, what would you call this? A, a little bit of a flap here with a magnet. So in order to open it, you just kind of push the magnet in and you can actually pull that pocket out. It has a zip up pocket at the back and then it's just one large compartment in the inside. Uh, I find that that makes it feel very secure, though if you did tip it upside down, maybe a lipstick or a lip liner might fall out. Uh, a really good everyday size. Um, really sweet bag and Parisa Wang bags in general are very very nice and also kind of in that nice mid price point bracket. Which actually let's do my Fendi bag next. You can see a side by side. I mean they're kind of doing the same thing. They're a similar sort of vibe. The Fendi Peekaboo I bought two years ago and I bought it on sale from Fashion File and I will say if you aren't bothered by the colour, if you're happy to buy a seasonal colour which is really loud that most people maybe might gravitate away from, then you'll get it for a really reasonable price. The leather quality on this is absolutely sensational. It is so soft and buttery. I think you just really see how slouchy it is. This has two compartments which have a turn lock closure on each side and then open up. This is lamb's leather and I will say it is quite delicate so prone to scratching. Uh, it's something to be mindful of but pouches on either side very very similar uh, interior it is leather lined but it is not too heavy it has a removable crossbody strap which is great although I leave this on all the time I always wear it crossbody whenever I do reach for it adds a really fun burst of color to my outfits and I'll pull in next I've got five bags from them to talk about here we're going to start with the very first bag I've got from the brand which is the Pauline number one or numero un nano bag and this is a really good kind of everyday size it fits the essentials iPhone little card holder lipstick keys etc and I will say if you look after this properly it will hold its shape so well mine looks immaculate and it's because I have made a point of ensuring it is not stacked underneath other bags. I've seen other people's bags and they are all squished been out of shape because they've clearly uh, kind of just thrown everything into a wardrobe. So this has a snack closure at the front and when you open it up you can access the interior of the bag which is one large pocket and what is very clever about this design is it has these little snaps here which are what give it its unique shape. So you can open that up and it allows you to get more width so that you can really get in the bag and, and kind of rifle through all your belongings. It also has a little slip pocket at the back which would be good for putting receipts or maybe your uh, travel card. The strap is removable and I always get questions about how to remove the strap so you can make it top handle. So it has this little stud press here. You basically just remove that and you can easily slip the strap off which is very, very handy. I think this is most practical as a crossbody, personally, and it also has the press studs on the base, which are great because it helps to protect the leather of the bag. Uh, this is a really durable leather as well, and I've had no issues with the glazing. I mean, it looks flawless. Full size comparison, I also have the Micro, I think it is called. This was sent to me as a Christmas gift from the brand, which is just so, so sweet, but they do sell them. It's in the Lizard, so you can kind of see. It's like mama and mini size. I've got this photo of my daughter holding this bag and it is literally one of my favorite photos of her ever because she looks so ladylike and cute. Uh, this to me is something I would wear as an add-on to an outfit with my cards in it and maybe a lip balm. It's not really functional for anything aside from that. Uh, I have not used this very frequently because it is, I mean, it's so small. So, uh, and I, I haven't really found myself kind of going that extra step to really style up my outfits, but I think this is very fun. If that's something that you like to do and you kind of want to add in another element, this is a great way to add in that third piece to your outfit with a very, very low minimal effort. Next we have the Berry bag, I believe. This is renamed. It was originally the Numero de bag, number 10, and then I believe it was renamed to the Berry. I have the one with the gold chain strap which I think is just so stunning especially if you are getting this with the intention of it being an evening bag. Now it does come in a leather strap version and that probably is going to be more versatile because you can wear it for every single day and you could easily take that strap off and then just buy a chain strap and then clip it on 
to the little hooks here on the side. Probably the thing that annoys me the most about this bag, but it's also one of the details I love about it. So the, the lovely shape with the diamond point at the base does mean that you can't stand the bag up. You have to lay it flat on its side. In order to get into it, you have to unclip here and then it has a magnet closure, a really decent size. Again, this is a good everyday size. And yeah, I wore this just recently to the Taylor Swift concert and I felt really chic. I wasn't worried. I mean, it's held up so well, the shape of it, also immaculate and there are absolutely no scratches to the leather. This is a lovely soft textured leather whereas the number one bag is in a leather that resembles something closer to a saffiato. It has been treated in some way. Then we have the number seven bag, numero set. And I will say this is probably one of the more interesting bags that I have because it is a cylindrical shape where it kind of has this petal effect. You can see the base of the bag, how it's basically the shape of a flower. This bag has a very kind of narrow opening, which is the reason why I never reach for this. I also find if you are wearing it against your body, because it is quite a wide, large shaped bag, it really sticks out. And I tend to prefer it when my bags lie really nice and close to the body or lie flatter against the body. Uh, but I think it is really beautiful. And again, the construction on it is great. If you really love this style and maybe don't need to carry too much, I would consider getting the nano size because I think that that is a little bit sweeter. I, I really think the size works well with the Nano personally, uh, but the, the leather, it is very similar to on the Berry bag where it is that nice textured leather. Mine is again, it's immaculate um, and it has really held up its structure so well. The final bag from Pull-In is the Nod bag and I think this is probably one of my favorite bags from them. I love this kind of folded plaited design that they've got here at the front. This actually goes right through into the bag. It isn't lined on the inside with anything. So, I mean, maybe you might have something full out of it, but I think this is such a chic style. This is in a smooth leather. So out of all the bags I've got from Poland, this one feels the most delicate. It feels, it, it feels like I have to be more careful with this than with any of the other styles. The opening is a little bit more kind of stiff, I would say, but the leather isn't so rigid that you can't easily get in. The interior is suede lined and there's no pockets or anything like that. The zipper means that it has a really nice secure compartment on the inside. Can be worn as a shoulder bag, but I personally prefer the crossbody length. I just think that makes this so much more functional. I have it in this lovely kind of buttercream yellow color and I will say it does get color transfer as I'm not sure what I had it next to in my closet, but there are some very small brown marks on the front and it makes me so sad because as much as I love this, I haven't reached for it as often as I would like to. And so it's a real shame. So if you do get this and you get it in a lighter color, be careful about where you're storing it. One of the oldest bags in my wardrobe, the Kuyana Tote, which won the Battle of the Tote Bags. I'll look that video up in the cards. This is such a good everyday bag for work, for the weekend. The pebbled leather, it is so durable. I haven't had a single issue with the stitching on this bag. I have noticed after almost a decade that the leather on the interior is starting to peel away from the leather on the exterior. That's such an easy fix for some leather glue. Overall, I think this is such a stunning tote bag that you really can't go wrong with. My curated mini shoulder bag, I mean, I absolutely adore this. I think the cream color is so pretty, has this lovely kind of metal closure here on the front, which opens up like so. The interior is just one single pocket. It's pretty lightweight, and this is designed purely to be worn on the shoulder, though I will say I wish it came with an adjustable strap or at least an additional piece of leather so that you could add to the strap link so it could be worn crossbody because that would be my preferred way to wear this. And it's one of the reasons why I haven't reached for it as much as I would like to, but uh, the quality is really nice. It is such a thick leather and being in this mock crop is so durable. You don't have to worry about it getting scratched. How many times have I talked about my low leather basket bag and said, I don't think you need to spend this much money on a basket bag? I will say out of the two basket bags that I've got, this one and this one here from Cezanne, I'm going to reach for the Cezanne one more because the long shoulder strap makes it more versatile for me. This one sometimes feels a little bit clunky to wear because of the stiffness of the straps and how they kind of seem to buckle outwards. It just looks a little bit awkward on the body. It is also such an 
open compartment here. So I do have the Loewe uh, dust bag here that I would usually put all my belongings into so that they don't fall out of the bag. So literally you tip this over and then everything is scattered all over the floor. Mine is in really good condition, but I would say that's because I've really made a point of looking after it and I haven't used it quite as much as I had anticipated. With a basket bag like this, obviously the more you use it, the more it's going to show signs of wear and tear. So if you have been looking at this, just keep that in mind. You can always pick up really chic basket bags from the market, especially if you were traveling somewhere like Europe. I have a couple of bags from Linya here, which I assume is still available on their website. They tend to focus more on jewelry these days, but we have the crossbody bag, which has a very similar shape to the Alma bag from Louis Vuitton, but this is just in classic black smooth leather. This is the calf leather, so it is going to be prone to scratching. I do find that it stores best if you have it stuffed. You can kind of see that the shape of mine, it kind of curves in slightly because I've left mine without any stuffing in it. But it has a detachable crossbody strap. After about seven years, I have noticed that the hardware has started to discolor, but you could easily take this to a leather repair shop to get that replaced with a new clasp if you wanted. It has two zippers, so you can have the zips meet in the center. And then the interior is a cotton twill lining. I've got some really old receipts in there because I've not used this bag in a while. It's really lovely, ladylike style. It has the feet on the base too. Being calf leather, because it's prone to scratching, you do need to be a little bit more precious with this bag. Then we also have this little one here, which I can't quite recall the name of, but this has been a really popular style for the brand along with their tulip bag. It's a vachetta leather, so it is going to soften the more that you wear it and also kind of change color. It will come a lot richer with wear. It does have a little branded uh, tag here, which you can have facing the other way if you want to be a little bit more discreet. This has a magnetic closure at the top and then it is this kind of more raffia linen textured fabric on the interior and it's got the zip up pocket. It also has a slip pocket as well. A really good size for every day but being really kind of that same sort of delicate leather I've been mindful about reaching for this and I think of the two. This might be my favorite for now. So this feels a little bit more elegant than I would occasionally reach for. And I'd say that's probably because I tend to be a little bit more casual now than I was when this one was first added to my wardrobe. Both really beautiful bags though. Do you remember when Fendi's baguette bag was having a moment? Well, I wasn't that into the baguette. I just felt like it was a little bit too small for me at that time. My eye hadn't adjusted, but I love the Mamazuka bag from Fendi. I really like that kind of monogram and the fact that it's so subtle because it's almost, it's embossed onto the fabric. Now, uh, being a fabric bag, this is so soft and slouchy. This was a pre-love find, and I was really lucky I bought it when I did because I'd say probably a month later, the prices on this thing skyrocketed. So I got really lucky because I think I paid 500, and it was in really good condition. The leather on the strap is probably splitting ever so slightly. I just need to get that repaired, but a decent size. So this looks best when it has quite a lot of things in it. So if you're not carrying very much, it ends up just looking a little bit sad. <laughs> This is a more recent addition to my bag collection from Karen Walker. This is their perforated basket tote, I think is what they're calling it. I really love the size of this. I think it is very, very practical. It is an open style, kind of similar to the Loewe one, but the difference with this is that it actually has, um, and I was just using this recently, but it actually has a little clasp here so that you can secure the sides of the bag so that everything isn't going to tip out. It also has a removable crossbody strap and a detachable wristlet or pouch, which is handy. I tend to put my essentials, the important things go on there. But I love the color of this, this kind of peachy apricot brown, really, really chic. And I think it comes in a larger size and also in black. From Strathbury, I have this cute little gray shoulder bag and it's just occurring to me now that I suppose you could also wear this as a clutch because the strap is detachable. And I would love if I had a crossbody strap for this because then again, it would just be something I wore a little bit more. If you have kids, you'll understand why. This has the T-bar closure, which you literally pull down, it's on a hinge, and then it is also magnetized. So this bag is really secure. It is a smaller shoulder bag. It's just gonna fit those core essentials in there, but a really good design. It is quite a structured leather. It has some nice kind of texture to it when you're touching it, but it looks very smooth to the eye. Um, 
but really beautiful and then just some very subtle branding on the back. The Cafune Stance Bag. I always get asked about this whenever I am wearing it in a video or I share it over on my Instagram and I think it's because this is a really good working girl option for the office. Say you want a work bag but you don't want something that is a typical tote. I think this is a good alternative. This is kind of giving Hermes Kelly vibes I would say. It's quite a structured leather but it has some softness to it as you can kind of see from the way it squeezes inwards. The leather on the handle is really firm and rigid and it does also have the crossbody strap which is removable. The closure is really just very simple. It has this clasp detail like that. I kept mine stuffed but the interior is very kind of basic. It just has a zip up closure and it's a nylon interior so it'll be very easy to wipe down if you do happen to get any marks or anything like that, any spills in there. Uh, overall a really pretty bag but this is in that calf leather that is going to be a little bit more delicate so you need to be mindful of not getting any scratches to it if you don't want to have those visible signs of wear and tear. We're almost at the end now I promise. Oleata, let's talk about some of their bags. Uh, and I can't remember all the names of these now. So we have this little chocolate brown. This is actually a belt bag, but I tend to wear it as a crossbody or a shoulder bag. I love the shine on this leather. It just catches the light so beautifully. This is quite a small bag and it barely fits my essentials. So again, this isn't one of those ones that I'm gonna be reaching for every day. And it comes in some really fun colors. I personally really like the uh, silver one and the cracked kind of leather. I think that is really beautiful. That's what the interior looks like. Uh, but quality is very, very nice. I think it'd be annoying if you got a scratch on this because of how shiny it is. It would probably show up quite significantly. So that's the first one. Then I have two other bags. This one being the Coast Tote, the mini size. This is a really good kind of everyday size. The fact that it has the canvas cotton here it feels a little bit more relaxed a little bit more chill oh my gosh I also have my Louis Vuitton bag upstairs I forgot about I will forget that <laughs> I think the size of it is really good you've got the longer strap it also comes with a crossbody strap and then you also have the shorter top handle strap as well it is an open tote but it has these little snaps here so that you can secure it uh, but really nice being canvas yeah it is probably going to get dirty if you aren't mindful of where you're putting it I've been pretty careful with mine so I haven't really noticed any marks or any grubby spots on it but you probably want to spot clean that maybe with some baby wipes. Then we have this absolutely enormous tote, which is again, another kind of interesting option for work. If you don't want a classic tote bag, this is more of a vertical style. It does fit a laptop and it can be worn on the shoulder as well. It has this really thick shoulder strap, which is great because again, when you have more leather on the shoulder, it helps to distribute the weight really nicely. This has a simple strap across the top, which closes with a magnetic closure. And then the inside has a little zip up pouch, which you can remove. So you can put your wallet in there and then just take this if you're going out for lunch. I would say that, yeah, if this ships over, you might find a couple of your items sort of scatter out onto the floor just because it is reasonably open at the top. This is quite a structured leather, so it's going to hold its shape really well, even without stuffing it. Okay, I've gotten a few questions about this next bag. This is from Rue de Genie, which is a Korean brand. This is kind of giving Chanel vibes, but without the Chanel price tag. It is a velvet bag that sort of has this hobo-esque sort of a feel with how slouchy it is. I will say that it does sometimes kind of bother me that it only lays flat straight like that when you are literally holding it like this. It always slouches on itself when you're wearing it. it has a lovely kind of a leather chain strap which is where you kind of have that Chanel element. <laughs> uh, it is one really large pocket on the inside so things are just kind of going to be rolling around in there but it really comfortably fits over the shoulder. I think this is really cute if you want to kind of add in some texture to your outfit and you also just like that kind of chain detail which I'll share with you my Chanel very soon but the newest bag that I have is the slimline tote this is from assembly label this has a really nice length strap I haven't actually had a chance to wear this yet because it literally just arrived uh, but this is a really well made bag it is such a thick leather it is a pebbled leather on the exterior which is going to be durable and hard wearing but the interior is a smooth leather it has a nice very, very firm magnet closure, which is great. Helps keep the top of the bag secure. Uh, and I, I just love the details on it, how the strap comes all the way down. You also have that kind of pleated effect at the base. And 
it fits so comfortably over the shoulder, fits a laptop. I mean, this is a really good option for work. Finally, we've got Chanel and I've got my boy bag, which is in the small size, up in the cupboard somewhere and I just wasn't up for trying to find it, but I just never wear that. It doesn't fit my phone in it anymore. And I absolutely love the bag, but I just wish it were an inch longer. Uh, the classic bag, I actually do reach for this every now and then. This is a vintage one. It is when they actually still use gold plating on the hardware, which was uh, kind of a deal breaker for me. It's in the lambskin, and I will say it is less precious than I expected it to be when I was buying it. I've maybe gotten like a small little scratch on the back because uh, I did drop this when I had the kids, but it did have some minor signs of wear and tear. And I think that's why I'm not too precious about it. It's kind of, I think it's worn really well and it's, I like that it's lived more than one life. I mean, you're probably very familiar with this bag, especially if you watch a lot of handbag review videos, but a really classic kind of ladylike style that is never gonna go out of fashion. And if you're curious, would I ever buy a brand new Chanel bag? The answer to that question is, Absolutely not. I am not their target demographic and all of their price hikes have really proven that to me. So I don't even really look at the brand except for occasionally on the pre-loved market. But I love this and I'm glad that I did actually end up deciding to buy it and treat myself to it. So that is an overview of all the bags that I have and that felt like such a mammoth session talking through everything. I hope those little mini reviews and just kind of looks at the bag gave you a bit of insight and if you do have any specific questions please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below and I can answer them for you. I will be sure to link to any bag reviews as well in the description box so that you can see more detailed and up close photos but thank you so much for watching. Uh, as mentioned I do know this is an absolutely obscene amount of handbags to have and I'm, I'm feeling very very embarrassed at this point but thank you so much for sticking here to the end through this very very long one I'm just so grateful that you took some time out of your day to spend it with me if you are new and you would like to see more videos from me I would love for you to subscribe and I will see you next time with a brand new video see you soon bye